Hello, Tim Ives from the Scarborough Church. How are you? Yeah, I'm in a new spot. This is the pastor's study. Uh, when this church was built in 1893, finished in 1895. Evidently, this was where the pastor uh, had his office. So uh, we're in here for right now. That's the, uh, the fireplace behind me. Uh, I know, I should have a better backdrop. Um, hmm. I don't know. We'll work on it. So, I hope you are well. How about that picture? Yeesh. That is worth looking at. Where's that road going? There is a road back by the reservoir where I live that looks just like that. Yeah, it's fall. Favorite time of year. I think I said that last time. Hope you are well. I hope that uh, uh, you are staying well and keeping yourself well. I hope that you're vaccinated. And uh, if you are in line to get the booster, that you've gotten the booster. Now, I've had the Moderna. I had the two shots from Moderna. So I, um, I keep reading on it. And no, they don't want you to have the Pfizer booster if you have Moderna. So evidently Moderna is coming out with one sometime soon. But if you can, do get the booster and uh, keep yourself well and uh, do, do all that you can to get uh, all of us through this. And of course, that, uh, what helps is to uh, uh, take care of yourself in this instance and that helps everybody. You know, that's the way ethics really ought to be. That's how we ought to think about ethics. That's the way we ought to think about being in this world in the best way possible, don't you think? Uh, to do that which is best for ourself. But remember, you know, Jesus told us, uh, uh, remember that what's best for us, you can tell what's best for us if it's also really good for everybody else. So to love somebody is good for the person you love, but it's good for you too. So that's the balance we're always looking for. And with this vaccine, certainly um, uh, getting yourself vaccinated against uh, COVID uh, helps other people that you might spread COVID too. So please, uh, we will finally get through this. Boy, it's been since March 20th, and that's still with us in all kinds of ways. Amazing, shocking. But if you read history, you will know that uh, this is not nearly as challenging as uh, some of the stuff that comes our way. And humanity does prove itself to be very resilient every time. And we will this time too. A uh, little hope, a little faith, a little kindness and love. Busy week this week at the Scarborough Church. Sunday is Red Shoes Sunday. If you don't know what Red Shoes Sunday is, this is all you need to know. On Sunday, wear some red shoes and uh, do something kind for someone. And if you do something kind for someone, feel good about it. And if you would be so kind, uh, go to aboutspc.org and click on Red Shoes Sunday and report that kindness to us so we can report that kindness to everybody else. And so we all might be inspired, inspired to be kind to one another always. Uh, we do this, Red Shoes Sunday, uh, in memory of Bob Minzesheimer, who died a few years ago. Uh, one of the things that was very charming about him was that he would wear red shoes, Converse, to church sometimes. Always made me feel uh, good that he felt comfortable enough to uh, wear his red shoes and be himself in church. Uh, besides wearing red shoes, he was a gentle and kind man who brought a lot of uh, uh, good vibe, good karma into the world. And so for, uh, uh, for his memory, uh, we hope to do the same. So uh, put on those red shoes, be kind, and uh, report, uh, report it to us so that, as I said, we can be inspired. Also, if you could be so kind, again, uh, uh, we are, it is, we are raising money and that money goes to the homeless program here in Osning and Briarcliff and Cortland Manor, uh, and Mount Kisco and Bedford. And it's actually all over Northern Westchester. 
So in the winter months, the Emergency Shelter Partnership brings um, people who don't have any place to go into churches, feeds them, keeps them warm uh, for the night, and we do this for the coldest months. Uh, so this program has been going on for a long time. You can give to that. You can also give to the library. Anything you give for Red Shoes Sunday goes to the library and goes to the Emergency Shelter Partnership that will be starting here in Osning in another six weeks or so. Also, uh, today uh, we had a funeral for Linnea Carnes, who we'll pray for a little later. And uh, she's a wonderful saint around uh, Scarborough Church. Also a wonderful inspiration for commitment and faith and living in this world uh, uh, for the good of others. Uh, so we'll remember Linnea in prayer. And uh, there is a crop walk on Saturday. I know I'm doing a lot of um, announcements here, but there's a lot going on, so I want you to know. Uh, and the crop walk is a fundraiser uh, to solve world hunger. And uh, if you want to give to it, uh, there's a link on the daily email, uh, and you can go right to it and pledge money to do it. And if you're in the area, please come along. It's up at Mariondale. We're all going to walk. Uh, so this is uh, good news. That was a lot of good news, uh, according to Scar uh, good news from Scarborough Church. And we just want to continue to remind ourselves of what a joy it is, what a miracle it is to be alive in this world, and even when it's challenging, that we have the chance to live in light and love because God has given us that chance, and to always be grateful for that. So Wednesdays remind ourselves that this is a wonderful opportunity that we have, and we are living. Uh, and so uh, to, um, to understand that, we go to the Bible. And today we've been going through Matthew. The daily readings go through Matthew pretty quickly. As the Presbyterian Church puts out the daily, uh, these daily readings, and uh, it's, it's, it's worth paying attention to. And this is, uh, in Matthew, about uh, chapter 10, 11, Jesus starts talking about the end a little bit. And uh, it certainly could have been on his mind because uh, the Bible tells us that he knew what was coming. But also, he seemed to think that uh, indeed the world would be coming to an end. How should we act if the world's coming to an end? It's often on his mind. It just seems a little bit more when uh, in chapter 10 and 11. One thing that happens is that you find out that uh, the way uh, we ought to be living if the end is coming is exactly the same way we ought to be living uh, if, uh, if the world goes on and on. So, all right, this is Matthew 10. See, I am sending you out like sheep in the midst of wolves. So be as wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of them, for they will hand you over to councils and flog you in their synagogues, and you will be dragged before governors and kings because of me as a testimony to them and the Gentiles. When they hand you over, do not worry about what you are to speak or what you are to say, for what you are to say will be given to you at the time, for it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you, Brother will betray brother to death, and a father his child, and children will rise against parents and have them put to death. And you will be hated by all because of my name, but one who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, flee to the next. For truly I tell you, you will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. God bless this reading to our use. Amen. A little scary, don't you think? A little scary there. We're uh, starting to talk about what's coming and what the end looks like and uh, uh, family rising against family. It's troubling. And um, 
the problem is it's not just some time out in the future. The problem is that this happens every day. It isn't necessarily just a sign of some other age to come, but very much a sign of our age today. And what does Jesus say in a troubled time like this? What does Jesus say to us when uh, uh, anything can happen and seems to happen? You look at the headlines every day, there's more trouble and, and reason to believe that mm, maybe the end is here. So uh, what does Jesus tells, uh, tell us? Or at least what does he tell his disciples? I am sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves, so be as wise as serpents and as innocent as doves. You know, there is a sort of a kind of caricature for the Christian, a kind of meek and mild guy or woman who doesn't really risk too much and is a little set back and not really troubling anybody. Uh, that's not what Jesus says here. I send you out like sheep into the midst of wolves. That's a problem, right? Sheep in the midst of wolves. Well, we don't have the sheep then. Uh, but Jesus does tell us to be a particular way. Be as wise as serpents and as innocent as doves. Well, that's not really the caricature we think of, is it? Maybe the innocent as doves part, but... Be as wise as serpents? And what a combination. Wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Well, think about it. Uh, Jesus does not, not want us to lose our innocence, uh, but we see enough in this world that we could very easily and do often lose our innocence. Like, oh my God, if that's the way the world is, I don't know if I want any part of it. And we want to kind of... Um, you know, recede into the background and hope that it doesn't come our way. But that's not what Jesus is talking about. What Jesus is talking about is, yes, there's a certain innocence in faith, and that innocence is uh, believing. That's a believing openness to possibility, as if we were innocent of our experience uh, and didn't know uh, what we did and weren't so quick to say, uh, that won't work, that's impossible, I've seen that a hundred times, that doesn't work. Um, no, Jesus wants us to maintain the innocence of saying, oh yeah, maybe maybe if I, if I act faithfully, God will uh, help and make this, whatever it is, kindness to rule in the world, um, uh, you know, people to get along a little better, people to reconcile, people to open their hearts to one another. Maybe if I put my best foot forward, that's the kind of innocence that Jesus asks for here. But it's not just a, a, a very naive kind of innocence. Be as wise as serpents. I've been trying to think about, well, how wise are serpents? Well, serpents are... Um, if you take that one in the Bible, is very worldly, has seen what comes of people and, and knows how the world works. If you go back to that uh, uh, passage in Genesis 3, we know all about the serpent and how the serpent sees through things and, and is able to tell the innocents about stuff that they really hadn't considered. And in that case, it doesn't work too well. But um, what Jesus is saying here is to be worldly, to understand how the world works, but never lose hope, never lose innocence that it can be changed. This is a, a very extraordinary coupling of two ideas, wise as serpents and in, innocent as doves. And I think it's exactly where uh, Jesus, uh, where God would have us be called because we can't be so naive about the world as to just be overwhelmed and run over by it but at the same time we can't just be so cynical that we won't do anything about it so it is provocative isn't it the other thing I wanted to point out here is that 
Um, yeah, Jesus says there's lots of trouble, but don't worry so much what you're going to do. Don't worry so much about what you're going to say. Don't worry so much. God will provide. So in a, a certain sit situation, certain, uh, how, do, how do we uh, do anything about that? Uh, here in Austin, we're about to uh, bring uh, an Afghan refugee into town. And, and when you think about, when you see the list of details, all the stuff that you got to do to uh, help that person, and to think just a little bit about uh, what the, this is a woman, a 25-year-old woman, uh, what she has been through to leave, leave her own country. Now she's in a completely foreign situation. And uh, to think about that is almost to be overwhelmed by it and say, well, what, what could we really do? Uh, and, uh, but uh, what we are seeing, as we've seen before, when people take a step of faith forward, uh, there comes a certain miracle potential that things really can change, things really can get done, and the world can be a better place. Uh, if you're, you know, if you're, uh, if you don't know uh, ahead of time, and won't go ahead unless you do know ahead of time, then, you know, faith is, is, uh, is a very difficult process because you never know. You never know what will happen. Uh, we're going to do a crop walk this Saturday. Now, do we think that will solve world hunger? No. Has this the first crop walk we've ever run? No. But it'll help. And we don't know uh, what can change. And someone hear the word or uh, be inspired by some people just out uh, trying to help and how that will change their hearts and change their minds. And perhaps that will be the difference. But you act faithfully. That's what Jesus is saying. Act faith. Even though you don't know what is to come, act faithfully. And you don't know. You don't know uh, what possibilities there are. You can't even conceive, which is a wonderful thing that God gives us, that, that, uh, that inspiration to open our hearts and minds to new possibilities. That's how we grow. That's how faith grows. That's how we become... Uh, the people we need to be. Amen? Amen. So, uh, please, uh, open yourself up to a new chance that will really do you and the world some good. Try it. And uh, uh, I guarantee this, God will be with you. Amen. Amen. All right, the other thing we do... Uh, Take another look at that reading, just so we can see. Oh boy, look at that. Let's take just a minute to contemplate. Where is that going? What's possible down that road?
Sweet, very sweet. Another thing we do on Wednesdays is we pray for one another. There's one of those uh, possibility things, right? Who knows? Who knows what uh, miracles will come just because we pray? Amen. All right. Um, as I said, uh, uh, we had a service for Linnea today. So we'll pray for uh, Linnea, who died last week, and we'll pray for her son, John. And uh, Brian Wong, who uh, uh, lost his dad, and having the service for him this Saturday, we'll pray for him and his family. And then uh, Will uh, made us aware of a uh, young girl, Nina, who has a brain tumor, uh, needs our prayers, and his friend Mona also has a brain tumor, needs our, our um, prayers, and Stephanie, who's uh, Lydia's, his wife Lydia's friend, also needs our prayers. Bob Hooley's parents, uh, we'll continue to pray for them, and uh, Maisie Kostachenko, who broke both of her feet over the summer, and we uh, continue to pray that she will uh, come back to full health. And Sean Curran and Terry DeTore also heard from John Dower that his dad uh, had emergency surgery and uh, is doing okay. Uh, and got good news from uh, uh, Patty Chapman, who is a saint around here. She's a grandmother again. Uh, Taylor had uh, a little boy, Philip. And so we'll pray for Andrew and Taylor and uh, Peter and Patty and Philip. Let us pray. Oh Lord, we give thanks. We give thanks for all good gifts. We give thanks for the gift of this moment. And we give thanks uh, for this day, this beautiful day, this beautiful season. Help us to be mindful in each moment that you are here and that you uh, are with us. Uh, and uh, in you, all things are possible. Let us just entertain that for a second. Oh Lord, we ask that you take Linnea into your loving arms and love her now as you loved her in life. And we pray for her son John, and we pray for all that knew, all those who knew her and loved her. Uh, heal their hurt and uh, help us to be inspired by Linnea's uh, life among us. We pray for Brian and uh, his family. We ask that you take his dad into your loving arms and love him now as you loved him in life. Hear our prayer for Nina and Mona and Stephanie, Bob Hooley's parents and Maisie and Sean and Terry and John Dower's dad. And we give thanks. We give thanks for the life of little Philip. And we ask that you be with Andrew and Taylor uh, as their family got one person bigger. And we pray for Patty and Peter uh, that they... Uh, enjoy this blessing. I know they will. We pray this in the name of Christ. Amen. Okay, a lot of stuff going on here at the Scarborough Church. Come to church on Sunday if you're around. We'd love to see you. Uh, be sure to wear your red shoes. And even if you don't come to church, wear your red shoes and be kind. Be kind to one another and let us know about it. Love to. Love to. Uh, and uh, we'll see you soon. Uh, many blessings to everybody. Uh, be mindful of uh, the good fortune you have. And be mindful that uh, this is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. There's a nice mindful uh, thing from the Psalms. Amen? Amen. All right. See you soon.